Good morning, good morning. It is Thursday, April 22nd, 2021. Good morning, good morning. I hope you brought your coffee with you. Mm-hmm. So good this morning. Good morning, Tanya. Good morning, so glad that you're here. And good morning, Greg. Cheers. It's gonna be a great day. Good morning, Paul and Sue. Glad that you have joined us this morning. And as I woke up this morning, I saw some white stuff on the ground and I thoroughly enjoy snow. I do thoroughly enjoy snow. So I was like, I am thankful for the snow. Good morning, Joyce and Shane. Glad that you're here. And good morning, Rob and Donna. Glad that you're here this morning and Ellen. And so yes, as uh, as Shane posted on Facebook already, uh, it's gonna like it's gonna be a great day. It's gonna be a great day, and uh, I am planning on kayaking a little bit later today. I usually, as a rule of thumb, try to kayak. Well, I should say it this way: I restrict myself to kayaking at only plus temperatures, so zero and above. Ooh, thank you for the love, Brenda. And so. Uh, so yesterday when it was like minus nine with the wind chill, I was like, mm, might be a bit too chilly. So I waited till about four o'clock to go yesterday. And so I'm gonna wait till a little bit later to go today. Yes, so, mm-hmm. But I have paddled in the snow before. <laughs> I do enjoy it. And so this morning, uh, I thought, well, I think I'll just stay inside. I think I'll just stay inside this morning. So, and I'll, I'll go tomorrow or this afternoon. So my question this morning, my question this morning, uh, because I was, I was thinking, okay, Lord, what is it uh, that you want me to share? And I had, uh, had no idea last night when I met with my triad from uh, the FMCIC. Um, and I just said, well, I've been here before. The Lord will let me know what he wants me to talk about. And so when I woke up and I and I read uh, another devotional, I was like, oh, that's good. Uh, warm is a gift. It is. My furnace was on. I was giving thanks for my furnace this morning. So my question is this. What is the purpose of a scarecrow? I know this is something we probably haven't talked about before. So the question is, what is the purpose of of a scarecrow. Mm-hmm. And I'll just sit and enjoy a few sips of my coffee as you tell me what is the purpose of a scarecrow. And it's tis the season, right? We're getting into to harvest and or not harvest, but planting season and yep, so what is a scarecrow? All right, to scare off, to protect crops, to keep away certain birds. Mm-hmm, right, to scare off, to scare off birds, uh, to help keep birds away from the fields. Uh, they think it's a person to keep unwanted birds and animals away, to get rid of old clothing, right? especially the ones that don't fit anymore when you put them on in the spring, because winter might have been a little, <clears throat> anyways. To deter the crows from eating the corn. Yes. <laughs> to scare away, or as Paul says, to someone, someone to talk to when no, no one else will listen, right? But to scare away, like the whole purpose of a scarecrow is to scare away, right? So here's a question. Is Is the scarecrow real? Like, is the scarecrow real? Like, yep, it's time for another sip then as you're thinking about that. Mm hmm. Is the scarecrow real? Hmm. Not at all. 
the birds perceive that it's real, right? The birds perceive that that scarecrow is real. In their mind, that scarecrow could, you know, just come and get them. <clears throat> but it's not real. It's not real. And, uh, and I got, that was what my devotional was about this morning, was this idea of the purpose of the scarecrow is to scare away crows from something that's really good. The purpose of the scarecrow is to scare away crows from something that is really good. <clears throat> and so let me just read to you what my devotion says. This is just like the crows. We may have to battle to overcome the deception of fear and not that keeps us from experience, experiencing the things God has for us. Right? These scarecrows in our lives prevent us, right? They're not real. Fear, right? They, they create fear in the crows and, and scarecrows in our own lives create fear in us that prevent us from experiencing the fullness that God has for us. And there's a story in the Bible that I was like, oh yes, yes, that's a goodie, right? The children of Israel, Old Testament uh, in the book of Numbers, they get to the edge of Canaan, this land that God, God, who loves them and has always said good things over them and said, I'm preparing a land for you, right? As it, they've come to the edge and Moses sends them in and he says, go in and, you know, and bring us a report of what it's like, of what it's like. He said in particular, uh, go up, see what the, so this is uh, Numbers 13, go up, see what kind of See what the land is like and whether the people who live there are strong and weak, few or many. What kind of land do they live in? Is it good or bad? What kind of towns? Like he's sending them in saying, go tell us what it's like. And they come back and it says uh, a little further down, it says in verse 27, they gave Moses this account. We went into the land in, uh, to which you sent us and it does flow with milk and honey. Here's its fruit. But the people who live there are powerful and the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites live there in the Negev. The Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites live in the hill country. And the Canaanites live near the sea and along the Jordan. And so can you, can you see the scarecrows coming up? Like that are just, they've said it's really good, but, and they literally put up like these, these scarecrows to keep them out right? Like God has prepared this land for them. And they've even said, it's good. But it's like, ooh, but these people are there. And these people are there. And these people are there. And it says, then Caleb, si Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, we should go up and take possession of this land for we can certainly do it, right? So there's, there's Caleb taking down the scarecrows. And it says, but the men, this goes on in verse 31, but the men who had gone up with him said we can't attack these people they are stronger than we are and they spread and they spread along uh, and they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored they said the land we explored devours those living in it although all the people we saw there are great size and so God had prepared this land for them he even like said I'm with you. I'm going to take you into this land. And from what the spies saw, they started setting up all of these scarecrows that said, we can't do this, right? Those people live there. We can't, they're too big for us. And Caleb comes along and says, no, no, like God is with us. Surely we can go and take it. And they just start spreading this bad report. The land was good. The land was what God was calling them to. But the spies allowed fear to come in and actually set up a false reality saying, we can't go there. We can't go there. It's like 
they forgot who was with them. And they chose to believe something that wasn't like, yes, the people were there, but they chose to believe that the, that the, the fears, the scarecrows were greater than the one who had called them there, right? This is the God who had brought them through the land, had fed them every single morning, had kept predators away from them. Um, it says, while they traveled, their shoes did not wear out, their clothes did not wear out. Like this is the God who was with them. And they chose to believe what their eyes saw instead of what they had, ex had experienced, right? They chose to fear instead of faith. And uh, what's, I, what I'm thinking about this morning is, you know, what are those scarecrows in our lives that are preventing us from moving forward into the land God has created for us? Yes, Beth, sometimes we put scarecrows up in our own lives, right? We have these fears. I can't do that. I can't do that. Um, I, another Devo that I read said this, a wise bird knows that a scarecrow is simply an advertisement. It announces that some very juicy and delicious fruit is to be had for the picking. Uh, there are scarecrows in all the best gardens. And if I'm wise, I too will treat the scarecrow as if it were an invitation. Every giant in the way which makes me feel like a grasshopper is only a scarecrow beckoning me to God's richest blessings. Faith is a bird which loves to perch on scarecrows and all our fears are groundless. Right? I love that idea that we are to see scarecrows as an invitation that beckon us into God's richest blessings. And so the question is like, okay, what is your scarecrow, right? Is it a difficult circumstance? Is it a, a, a sense of personal inadequacy? Is it uncertainty about something? Because the enemy of your soul wants to keep you from experiencing the fullness of blessing that God has from you, right? What are your scarecrows? Are you afraid of someone today? Are you afraid of, of going to work, right? Are you, are you afraid of, of maybe applying for a new job? Are you afraid of putting your house up for, your, for sale and, and moving to a different community? Are you afraid of, of being honest about how you're feeling about something? Um, the book of Timothy says this, God did not give you a spirit of fear but one of power, of love, and a sound mind. And we also looked at um, Psalm 46 yesterday, and it says, therefore, I will not fear, right? God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Therefore, I will not fear, though, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. I will not fear because God is with me. And God didn't give us a spirit that makes us afraid. And so when we, when we see those scarecrows in our lives pop up, whoop, there it is, right? Okay, Lord, what is the invitation that you're calling me to that the enemy doesn't want me to have, right? Seeing those scarecrows, when, when the fear comes up, we need to see it as an invitation to say, dear Lord, would you help me to move forward? Would you help me to embrace, embrace what it is that you have for me? Help me not be overwhelmed by fear, but help me to believe that you are calling me to something great, right? To see that scarecrow as an invitation to blessing, to see that scarecrow as an invitation to a rich harvest, to see that scarecrow as an invitation to experience life to the full. All right, so we're gonna pray. Dear Lord Jesus, would you show us what those scarecrows are in our lives, what it is that's preventing us from experiencing the fullness that you have for us because 
Lord, you have, you do have good things in store for all of us. They might not always come in the packages that we like. But Lord, where fear stands up and, and prevents us from moving forward, Lord, would you help us to see that as an invitation to grab your hand and to move forward and to say, but with God, I can do this because he's going to go before. So Lord, help us not to be afraid of scarecrows today. but help us to believe in the one who is with us. Therefore, I will not fear because you are our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And you did not give us a spear that makes us afraid, but one of power, of love, and a sound mind. So would you help us to walk in a sound mind today? We ask this in your name. Amen. All right, my dear friends, that's it. That's all. Be encouraged today. Watch out for those scarecrows. Knock them down. Knock them down. Knock them down with Jesus. Right? He didn't give you a spirit that makes you afraid. Power, love, and a sound mind. All right. Make sure you go outside. Like and share. Bye.